the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. The United States has more automobiles per capita than any other nation in the world. It also has more automobile thefts. To combat this situation, our law enforcement agencies are ever busy applying new and improved methods of crime detection. But the criminal, too, has also applied himself to devising new and improved methods. On the surface, there was nothing suspicious in the visit of Leroy Edwards to a wrecking yard, nor in the fact that he wished to purchase a car. Can I help you, mister? Yeah, I'm looking for a 55. Any make or model? Nope. Doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. Well, you're the customer. Got a 55 sports model. Just came in a couple of days ago. Well, there she is. Isn't good for much more than salvage. I said I wasn't particular. Got eyes for this, mister? Yeah. 800. For this? Why, it's good for nothing but salvage. Your boy here admitted it. 800. That's my price. You know, I can go someplace else. This isn't the only wrecking lot in the county. Suit yourself. Go get the registration slip and make out a receipt. And arrange for a vehicle transfer to Mr. Russell. Frank Russell. Pushing a little hard, aren't you, Charlie? What's fair is all I ask. I take risks, too, you know. Try explaining that to Virgil. You know how he is with money. You gotta spend money to make money, Leroy. Not Virgil. He still got the first nickel he ever made. Under the hood. What about that new boy? Jimmy? You all right? <laughs> Don't worry about Jimmy. He doesn't know a thing. Eat, sleep, and pick up his paycheck. That's all he knows. Ouch! <laughs> Here, I should work up a sweat. You do it for the price I'm paying. I'm gonna use your phone, okay? Be sure and leave a dime. Operator? I want Wallen, 48737. Virgil, this is Leroy. I'm over at Charlie's. I just picked up a 55 sports car. What's the make? Uh-huh. Good. How much? 800. All right, all right. It's done now. There's no sense in crying about it. I'll keep my eye open for one that'll match it. Yeah. All right, I'll let you know as soon as I spotted one. What? Another one last night? Ernie's used car lot. That makes six. We're doing everything we can. All the B cars have been alerted. Every used car dealer in town's posted. That's not enough. We... Matthew speaking. What? No, no, believe me, you did the right thing. It's fine work. We'll check it immediately. Where's it located? But well, thanks, we'll be right over. Come on, let's go. Patrolman Ellsworth had checked out Charlie's wrecking yard, reporting that he had talked to an employee regarding the same model car that was taken from Ernie's used car lot.
I couldn't help being suspicious. A customer pays $800 for a wrecked car and then doesn't even bother to come and get it. How long ago was this? Two weeks. That's what I mean. All that time, no phone calls, nothing. I think he'd show some interest in it. I guess I was a little out of line, Mr. Giddings. Talking to well, the officer without your permission. I just mentioned it in passing. I'd like to take a look at it. What for? There's nothing to see. Just a pile of junk. Then you wouldn't mind if we'd examine it, would you? Okay. Like I said, just a wreck. Hey, it's all right. Take a look at this. Serial numbers been taken off. How about that? How about taking a look at your books? Okay. Here it is. May 8th. The car was sold to Frank Russell. $800. That's kind of a steep price to pay for a hunk of junk, isn't it? If a guy wants to pay that much, I don't try and talk him out of it. You give him the registration slip? Yeah. Check this through DMV, would you? Can you describe the man that bought the car? This fellow, what's his name? Uh, 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 Frank Russell? From two weeks ago? Are you kidding? I remember. Who could forget him the way he was dressed? Cowboy hat, boots. Anything else? Well, he had sort of a western draw. If that's any help. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Oh, sure. I'd know him okay. How about you? Did your memory improve then? Could be. Looks something like that, but... Gee, with all the customers we get in here... Well, if he comes in, you recognize him. Contact us, will you? Come on, Dylan. Let's go. Charlie, haven't you got any work to do? Go on out and stack those tires. Go on, I said! I have a dealer already picked out. You'll take the car in tomorrow morning and close the transaction. Six cars this month. At this rate, Roy, we'll soon be rich. You'll be rich, you mean. You know, Charlie set me to thinking. A fellow ought to get a fair price for the risks he takes. And you don't. Peanuts. That's what I get. Peanuts. I take the chances and you collect the gravy. You're safe and cozy. There's no way the law can tie you in with this racket. But me, I gotta operate out in the open. You call that fair? I supply the brains, Leroy. The organizational know-how. The physical setup for our venture. I've got big operational expenses. Maintenance. Equipment. Overhead? From now on, I am your biggest operational expense. The Department of Motor Vehicles reported that a wrecked car registered to Frank Russell was transferred to Leroy Edwards, address RFD 19. But the car was still sitting in the wrecking yard. You can pick up the truck later. Right now, I want you to get this car out of here. I'll phone you at the farm later and let you know where I want to deliver it. Right. Well, say, don't forget your promise to me about taking care of me. And never fear, Leroy. I won't forget. Oh, Virgil, I left my hat in your shop. Would you get it for me? Don't lose this one of these days if you're not careful. Operator? Walnut 48737. Virgil? Charlie, is Leroy there? Something's happened. I gotta speak to him right away. The police? They what? No, no. Leroy just left here. Maybe if I hurry, I can still catch him in time.
Edwards? That's right. Matthews, Highway Patrol. You the registered owner of this car? That's right. I bought it a week ago from uh, Frank Russell. Here, registration. See? Let's see. You got any idea where we can find this Frank Russell? No. I heard he moved away. That's all I know. Uh, what's it all about, anyway? Nothing. We're just curious how one car can be in two places, here and also at Charlie's Wrecking Yard. Do you mind coming along with us? No, I don't know. We have proof the car was stolen. The engine block's been altered. Serial number scratched out and a new one put in. Who did the job for you? Who else is mixed up in this? A hundred times I've told you. I bought the car from Frank Russell. That's all I know. I think you're lying, Edwards. Prove it. They're both out here. Do you want me to bring them in now? Yes, yeah, it'd be a very good time to bring them in. You want me to prove it, you said? I'm liable to do just that. I don't think there is any Frank Russell. I think Edwards and Russell are one and the same man. Would you stand up? All right, turn around. Put your hat on. Is this the man? Well, he's dressed like Russell was. Nah. It isn't him. Russell was taller and had darker hair. Charlie's right. Slight resemblance, that's all. He isn't Russell. Never saw the man before. You're sure? I said it, didn't I? All right, you two can go. So? Now what? So now what? I'm going to book you on suspicion of grand theft auto. Take him out. Let's go, Edwards. Interrogation failed to shake Edward's story. A thorough examination of the stolen car revealed that it had been processed with professional machine tools and baking equipment. What the examination did not reveal was where the work had been done. This whole thing is too pat to be a one setup operation. You're thinking this stunt has been pulled before successfully? Yeah, that's right. They cased the wrecking yard. They find themselves a late model piece of junk. Then they go out and steal an identical car, repaint it, change the plates, have the registration changed. As far as DMV is concerned, they got themselves a registered motor vehicle. And who'd get suspicious? Look, I want to check on every wrecking yard in the area, find out all the models. Wait a minute. Better still, use this stolen car list as a check. Check all the makes and models on this list. Get on it right away, will you? Right. A systematic check was made of all the wrecking yards in the area. As they questioned the various proprietors, a picture slowly began to take shape. Too often to be mere coincidence, a dealer's record showed that he had sold a particular model only a few days before a car of matching description had been reported stolen. We've made 39 absolute matchups. It's that big, huh? That's not all. Leroy Edwards used a flock of aliases. There's no mistaking his description. At least 12 wrecking yard operators are ready to testify that they sold cars to a man wearing hat and cowboy boots. Sure makes a liar out of getting in his associate, doesn't it? Have Edwards brought to my office right away, will you? What? When was this? Okay, thanks. Oh, that's real nice. Edwards posted bail. He got out two hours ago. Oh, no problem. With these new witnesses, we can bring them in again. Oh, I got a better idea. It's liable to work in our favor. Edwards is only part of the setup. I'm interested in the rest of the group. If we lock him up, it's not going to stop him. At the moment, he's our only link to the rest of the gang, right? Come on over here. I'll show you something. Well, everything we've learned so far shows they're working within this 40-mile radius right in here. It takes in a lot of territory. They must have their own paint shop or access to one. Yeah, that's right. 
Could easily be 15 or 20 paint and body shops that could handle the work in that area. How do we know which is the right one? Would you get me Giddings Wrecking Yard, please? If you're going to break a chain, work on the weakest link. Hello, Mr. Gidding? This is Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. Would you mind asking Mr. Higgins to be in my office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Uh-huh. What's it all about? Oh, nothing. We just found some new witnesses on the Edwards case. We'd like to go over his statement again. Alone. Operator, victory 23578. Leroy, Charlie, something's come up. I gotta see you right away. No, it won't wait. I don't care if it does mean taking a chance. You get over here now. So they want to see Higgins in the morning. That doesn't prove anything. Alone, he said. Do you know what happens if he gets Jimmy alone? Well, you're suggesting I take him with me? Swell, and what do I do with him? That's your problem. Virgil's supposed to be big in the brain department. Let him work it out. All in all, this has been a very bad day. I could be worse. But with Jimmy and you out of the picture, they've got no case. Let them bring up their other witnesses. With you gone, they got no one to testify against. I'm safe, Virgil's safe. And I'm running the hundred yard dash. Oh well, so I'll be the first guy to raise Rock Island Reds in Tibet. Come on, kid. Seems you're going with me. Oh no. Oh. No time to argue. Get some rope, Charlie. Let's tie him up. All right. Come over here. All right, so he's parked out there. That makes him a cop? I don't like it, I tell you. Why take chances? Go out the back way. He won't even see you. Coberly called in. He staked out at Charlie's wrecking yard. Says Edwards rolled in there about 10 minutes ago and hasn't come out yet. Must be holding an emergency press conference. Jump in bail. Do you have any idea where that puts me? Not only do I lose my farm, I'm a fugitive from justice. I'm the guy they're looking for, not you. Oh, I appreciate the fact, Leroy. But I don't see precisely what I can do about it. You can finance me, that's what you can do. I need money for traveling, money for living. I gotta get out of the country, and I got no eyes for hitchhiking. I'd let you have a thousand. Oh, no, Virgil. You're not gonna pinch pennies this time. You've been promising to take care of me. Well, put your money where your mouth is. How much did you have in mind? 25,000 ought to do it. I see. Well, the bank's closed. I, I couldn't get it today. Uh, wait. No. No, I've got a better idea. You know my mountain cabin up at Lake Patricia. Well, I'll give you the key. You go up there and lie low until I raise the cash. Hmm? Yeah. And my passenger, what am I supposed to do with him? Lake is very deep. Yeah, well, that's going to cost extra. Five grand. I'll pick up the freight charges. Well, you'll need bedding and supplies. I'll go get them for you. Oh, uh, and if you didn't show with that money, I'd come back. You know that. I know. <laughs> You 
sure took your time about it. I wanted to be sure you'd be comfortable. Well, come on. You've got a long drive ahead of you. The sooner you get started, the better it'll be for all of us. Matthew speaking. What? What was this? On the road to Lake Patricia? Okay, we're on the way. All right, take it easy, kid. I tried to warn him. The gag. I couldn't talk. Oh, all I could do was wait. It was awful. Annoying. Any second it might happen. He did something to the brakes, I think. Who? Who did something? I don't know. I never saw him before. Where was this? Where Leroy took me. He parked out back. I don't really know where it was. Could it have been a garage? Maybe. It's hard to say. A low building. I guess it could have been a garage. We need your help very badly. I'll try and remember a, a landmark. Now think hard, will you? There was a poster. Sloan for Councilman. I remember that. That's all? Just relax, kid. The doctor's here now. We got Charlie Giddings in custody. Nothing. That's the first thing a used car dealer does when he takes a car in trade. Gives it a tune-up and a loop job, right? Come on, get in. A check of the stolen vehicle revealed that it had been driven a total of 15 miles between the time it was stolen and picked up. Three of those miles were automatically disqualified, that being the exact distance from Edwards Farm to the highway patrol impound. The driving distance between the farm and the used car lot was nine miles, leaving a three-mile leeway. Somewhere within this specific area was the paint shop. Further investigation established that only one such shop existed in this area. something? Where did we slip up? Where? You tell me. I will. Take a look. Posted all over the place. That doesn't mean anything. Sure it does. Now keep looking. Tell me what you see. Bicycle shop. That's right. We made a mistake. We assumed that the only place that would fill the gang's requirements was an automobile paint and body shop. saying see you next week.